Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we're going to talk about fuses and I'm going to show you where to buy them and we're going to go over the data sheet and look at the most important parameters being uh, voltage, current, and I squared T. So we're going to look at the data sheet and I'll explain that and uh, and let's jump into it. Let's do it. Okay, hey, welcome to uh, selecting our fuse and I just want to cover um, the main parameters you want to look at when selecting a fuse and where to buy it. PartsExpress.com, Parts-Express.com. I just searched for fuses here. See, so search for fuses, and I found circuit breakers. You can choose one of those for your power supply protection. Um, here's fuse type lamps. That's kind of lamps that are in this fuse uh, body, and then crossover fuses. Well, these are going to be for DC lower voltage. Now voltage is very important for your fuses so the very first print where you look for is voltage. You want to get something uh, that's UL rated at 150, 120 volts, uh, 250 volt kind of thing. So that would, now here's these PTCs, the poly reset volt switches. Uh, these are good for certain things but for AC protection I, I recommend that you just get a, a glass fuse or a circuit breaker. Um, you can maybe put one of these in series, I don't know. But anyway, it's good to have something that just opens, electrically open. So, um, okay, let's just look at the fuse. Okay, um, these first ones are for solar panels. We want an AC kind of fuse. Now, these are ceramic fuses. They're going to be slow blow, very, very slow. Uh, the sand in the ceramic helps absorb some heat and and so you really have to get enough current to melt the metal so that the, they're very good for uh they're very slow fuses um i don't know if we need something that slow but we could it might turn out we need that um but what you want so first we found the voltage all these are going to fall within the voltage class we want i think except for those solar ones and maybe they might even be a crossover meaning that they might work for both dc and ac but um but we just come down the ones we know about and Plus, since they're not special fuses, these are going to be less expensive, I, I think. It would run up here real fast. No, those are inexpensive as well. So, I guess fuses are fuses, right? Um, so, when you come down here and, and, you know, for instance, like this 2 amp fuse right here, it's $3.38, okay? Um, now, uh, um, when you choose the current, you want to make sure you protect the electronics. The VA uh, rating of your transformer, you, you must protect that. So if it's, a say, a 300 VA transformer, then if you have 115, 120 volts on it, then you really don't want to go much over 3 amps in that transformer. So, um, you know, maybe a 2 amp. I mean, you, you, you want to protect what you're powering. If your amplifier only needs 2 amps in your AC power, like that would roughly be about 200 VA. Um, say a hundred and something, maybe it's a hundred watts, you know, and if you're a 50 watt, um, you know, amplifier, then, then two amps should be plenty. But let's just look at the curves just for, let's just open one up and look at a data sheet. Okay. Uh, $3 by 20, you get them for 338 you buy 20, you get 296. Okay. Here's the, the, uh, data sheet it's from little fuse you know one of the big larger manufacturers for fuses um, it's a 3ag this is standard 3ag um, it's, it says it's like a glass body it's uh, um, now you're gonna have these fuses gonna be rated you have the axial kind with the, the leads coming out of it and then you have the the cartridge that you fit into a cartridge so those are the part numbers these are 313s these are 315s anyway um, then you have the current rating this is an amperage rating um, the voltage rating and then they give you resistance too so you can put that if you if you're interested in that you you can see what that's going to be um, and then i squared t so this is the surge current capability how much current can happen on surge so that's i squared times t that's amps 
squared times your time, okay? Just to make math easy, let's come down here and look at a one amp one, because one amp squared is just one. That makes it easy. So one, uh, you know, I squared, if it's one, times T is 14, so that means 14 seconds. So uh, now the other thing I want to note on this, this I squared T is for surge current. It's not for the rating of the fuse, because it, it'll actually handle the rating for a lot longer time. But uh, let's say this one amp fuse has 10 amps going through it. 10 amps squared is 100, and 100 times something is equal to 14 times time, which is, uh, it'd be 14 um, milliseconds. So it'll, the one amp fuse will handle 100 amps for 14 milliseconds. So that's a pretty big surge current. Um, Okay, so uh, let me see. This is the other thing I wanted to show you. This is a, a quick way for us to see how much, uh, how slow these really are. At, uh, say a one amp fuse, it'll, it'll handle one amp for four hours, okay, at a minimum. And then it'll, say, handle two amps, 200% for five seconds. So one amp fuse, you put two amps in it, it, five seconds later, it might open. It's sometime after five seconds. Okay, now if you want to see this equation kind of in action, let's come over here. Here's the graph. So this graph, current is across here. See here's one amp, two, three, and this is logarithmic. You see two amps is, is kind of far away from one. And then three gets closer, four gets closer, each one gets closer. Nine, ten are real close together. That's just logarithmic. It's just a, a way to show graphs that were when you have when you have that squared, I squared, um, that's kind of a you know gives you a better logarithmic, better look at the graph when you use log. And so, um, because I, I squared, they use log across here. But they're also using log on time. Uh, so, this is log log graph. So, if you come over to 100 amps, and you take that 1 amp fuse. Now, first thing to note, that 1 amp fuse, if you look, this line right here, that's one amp. So if you follow this line up here, follow my finger up here, one amp hits the three quarter amp fuse rating. The one amp rating is actually between the one amp and this line right here's, you know, let me get this amp line right here is the two amp line. So the one amp is between the one and two amp line. So it's about one and a half, one and a quarter amp, something like that. Um, so that's you know, going to take, and this is seconds, so that's a thousand seconds, so that's a, a long time that it can be up in that area, so, uh, but now if you follow this curve and see how it curves over, so it hits the line right here, it hits right, let's see, where is it, did I follow it again, let me follow that again, so one amp, One amp hits right here. So so this is 10, that's 20, 30. So this 10, 20, 30, that's almost 40 amps. So, and that's 10 milliseconds. So it can go uh, 40 amps in 10 milliseconds. Yeah, so anyway, you, you know, you, you can see that how these curves help you. So if we chose, say, that two amp fuse, Okay, if we chose that two amp fuse and we follow the line down here, it hits about 90 amps. So that two amp fuse will, will be able to get about 90 amps in 10 milliseconds. So now our 60 cycle frequency is 60 hertz. It's one over 60 is 16.7 milliseconds. Half that wave is one of our pulses and we're gonna charge that capacitor mostly in the first pulse. So that first pulse 
we can go up to 90 amps, which we can easily do with without any kind of you know without impedance in, in our circuit. So that's why I, I kind of like to put the inductor before the capacitors to slow that peak down to kind of save the fuse, save everything out so they don't have that big inrush current. Um, but that's how you look at this I squared T curve. This is I squared T curves, and here's I squared T column. So you can use math to calculate that. And here's the, uh, now I have um, some equations in my, in my uh, power supply design uh, video that, that shows some math on here. Um, but you can kind of see where this all comes from now. And these uh, little few state sheets, very nice. It's UL rated, it's C, um, UL, and Canadian. So CSA, so it's got all the the the, uh, the ratings here. Okay, so this is um, a place where you can come buy your fuse, and you can see the price. We'll go backwards, three dollars thirty eight cents. Now, what if you want to put it in the fuse holder? Let's look at the fuse holder while we're here. If this will come back, whoops. Let's go one more place. Okay, let's say we're going to put it in one of these kind of fuse holders. Okay, now, actually, what do we got here? Here's that fuse holder. Here's an inline type. You know, if you just wanted it in the cord, um, you'd have to open up the box to get to that. Oh, here's another common type used. You know, we're going to mount this on your bottom of your box, maybe, or on a circuit card, but you'd have to open up the box again to get to this guy. So, um, you could go to the breaker where you just push the button and same kind of voltage of current ratings for those. Um, now here's, this one says AGC fuse holder. So let's look at that guy. Okay, so here's for Parts Express again, the fuse holder, uh, AGC type fuses. You can go up to 15 amp fuse, 120 volt AC, that's what this guy's rated for, 120 volt. Um, for So for us in the US, that's great. Canada, that's great. Um, up to 15 amp fuses. And it is the AGC type 3AG, uh, one and a quarter inch fuse by quarter inch. And this hole in your, in your case would have to be 5 eighths inch. So, and this guy's $1.28 in singles. If you're going to buy 10, you can buy them for 91 cents. So, you know, that might be worth buying 10 to have some around. Um, okay, well, anyway, so that's the fuse holder that I'll probably select and, um, and the fuse. So, um, depending on the VA of your transformer or, or your circuitry, the VA, you don't want to choose a fuse rated to put too much current into your transformer that's number one and then um, number two is it should only be big enough that you require if you can get away with a two amp to protect your amplifier then that would be the one you'd want to choose you don't need to choose one f for your VA maybe you have a 500 VA transformer you don't need to choose one that big um, here's here's a little breaker type you know has a little push button 10 amps just reset it so you can always choose this kind of uh, breaker too so but okay so there's there's a quick video on just where to find your parts and and how to how to look at the specs how to look at the data sheets uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this um, thanks guys